Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. So, can you believe it? Amathia's Garden, my Red Sea Reefer XL425, is a year old. I had a really hard time deciding how to approach this one year anniversary video. So I decided to do something just a little different. I hope you enjoy it. To start with, I'm showing you a whole bunch of shots of then and now. What the tank looked like when it started cycling and what those same views look like today. I'm just blown away by this. I wouldn't have believed it until I actually put these pictures together. It's just amazing. Things are doing really well. And I'm almost afraid to say that because you know what happens when things start going well in a reef tank. You need to be extra vigilant because that's when you get complacent and something starts going wrong. And before you know it, you have a full-blown crisis on your hands. So to that end, the next part of the video is going to be about what it takes to maintain this reef on a day-to-day -day basis and the kinds of tasks and maintenance that have to get done all the time regularly to keep things going. I use eight separate power heads to create the flow in my tank, so I keep a very close eye on them. There are four on each side of the tank, plus a random flow generator nozzle. All of these things need regular maintenance, so that's one task that I really try not to put off, because it's amazing how when these things get all clogged up and dirty, it affects the flow drastically. So I do my best to make sure I keep them clean. I do return pump maintenance whenever I can psych myself up enough to pull the pump out of the tank. Here's what it looks like after about nine months of use. So it's really not that bad. It would probably still keep going. But the last thing I want is to suddenly have a problem because you know when that'll happen. Of course, when it's least convenient and often when you pull out the return pump, you get a bit of a shock at how dirty things are underneath. So this is a great opportunity to clean all of this up as well. I use the balling light method for dosing. And you can see here that I've almost used up the KH. This took about six months. I keep a very close eye on this on a daily basis because the last thing I want is to suddenly run out of any particular element, especially for alkalinity. There can be real problems if this runs out. Recently, I learned that you shouldn't keep your bottle of Nopox right beside your bottle of Revive on the shelf because the bottles are very similar when it's late at night and you're not paying a lot of attention. And no, I did not dose Revive to my tank, thank goodness. But it was a close one. These are the filter floss pads I keep in my filter media cups in place of filter socks. Needless to say, I swap these out every 24 hours because this is what they look like. Here's about three weeks worth of growth on my algae scrubber screen. I have the Santa Monica filtration rain Two algae scrubber. The problem here is that three weeks and the stuff turns to slime at the bottom, which is not good for your tank. So I've recently stepped this up to weekly cleaning. The algae scrubber can get immensely gunky and gross, so I take it apart regularly. I also maintain the pump quite often. And then we have the skimmer. This is one heck of a lot of nasty, and it builds up rather quickly. Here's the skimmer pump. Yeah, I think it's been a little bit too long since the last time I did this because this is a level of disgustingness that I haven't seen in a long time. Okay, she's done. So after spending an entire day tearing everything apart, cleaning it, putting it back together again, my sump looks great. I love my Clearview lid but it does tend to collect salt creep. 
so it needs a regular shower. Let's take a bit of a break from chores and meet the fish. And yes, this snail is actually climbing out of the tank. I didn't think it was that bad in there. I bet most reefers have the same experience I do, which is that when you feed your fish is when you see everybody right up front. Hopefully, because you don't want any to be too shy to get their food. But I don't have that problem with my fish. They all come right out and grab what they can isn't a lot of conflict and they get along really well. Sometimes there's a bit of chasing, but most of the time everybody gets their share. So let's meet the fish who live in Amathia's garden. Here's Magnus, my five-year-old yellow clown goby. He spends most of his time here and this is where he sleeps at night. Here are Sunny and Cher, the Darwin Ocellaris clownfish. If I ever have drama in the tank, it's generally between Cher and the male spot breast angelfish. She can be very aggressive when de defending the back corner of the tank, which is her house. She also tries to chase snails away by wiggling her tail at them really strongly and occasionally is successful in knocking them right off the glass. Sunny, the male, can also be a little bit aggressive. He takes care of business and then heads back home. And here we have Elizabeth, the royal grandma. Get it? Royal grandma? <laughs> yeah, that's a bad joke, I know. But she's very beautiful, very peaceful, a little bit shy, but always comes out for food and often cruises around the tank just checking things out. This is Bianca, the green wrasse. I think Bianca is a female because of her color. It's pretty much indeterminate. It's not even yellow, it's not even green, it's kind of a silvery beige color. She has some pretty blue stripes around her fins, but that's pretty much it. People have said she's probably a female and that's why the color, so that's why I've called her Bianca. But if she ever transitions to a male and becomes the beautiful minty pastel green that I was expecting, then I'll have to change her name and I'm not quite sure yet what that'll be. Here's Pamela, the Tomini Tang. She is doing so well now. When she first came into this tank, she was badly bullied, but she's recovered really, really well, and she's beautiful now. Here's Elvis, the Midas Blenny. Elvis was the king, King Midas, get it? Yeah, I know, another bad joke. This fish is really entertaining. Most people who have had one of these have said the same thing. They're really active, super friendly, all over the tank, always ready to eat. And this particular guy has decided he's going to move into the barnacle, which is wonderful because he'll be right up front where I can keep a close eye on him. And we can't forget Armando, the flame hawkfish. Love this guy. And finally, my pride and joy, Sven and Inga my spot breast angelfish male female pair. These fish are gorgeous and they're in the genus Genacanthus, which are reef safe angelfish. They truly are reef safe. I have never seen them bother or pick at any coral. They're a delight to watch and I never tire of watching them in the tank. Unfortunately, I've never been able to get footage of them zooming around, chasing each other in and out of the rocks, which they usually do at night as the lights are ramping down. So we're near the end of the video and you probably have noticed that although you've seen it in the background, I really haven't talked about coral. And that's because so much has happened with coral over the past year in Amathia's garden. So I've decided to make a separate video about that so that I can really show you what's in here and provide some detail. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.